This is Ventura, California. From popular surfing spots and a historic pier to a river estuary that is a haven for birds and other creatures. Enjoy a warm community atmosphere and take in the 9th California Mission, a city commemorated by both a museum with multiple locations and a classic song about a scenic highway named after this city. Soar over a mysterious pier and island and see downtown from a bird's eye perspective and take in the psychedelic charms of the county fair. This is a city that an article in the Washington Post called the absolute best American city to live in. Sit back and enjoy the history, the stats, and some of my personal thoughts and experiences on this trip to Ventura. I took this trip and shot this video in August of 2023. Actually, it was two trips. <laughs> I arrived at dawn so that I could capture the sunrise. That is the Ventura Pier, which is overlooked by the Crown Plaza Hotel. The Crown Plaza Hotel is the only hotel on the beach, according to their website. The pier, originally built in 1872 and once known as the Ventura Wharf, is the oldest pier in the state of California. The Crown Plaza Hotel features the striking Top of the Harbor Ballroom and the Bayview Meeting and Events Room. After parking the car, I walked along the promenade toward the pier. The Ventura Promenade is an oceanfront pathway that runs between the pier and Surfers Point. The promenade features benches and interpretive panels. Beyond Surfers Point, you can continue on the trail to the bike path that connects to the city of Ojai, about 15 miles away. Then, I took the stairs down to the beach and walked around, enjoying all the driftwood which apparently washed ashore during a fairly recent storm. This was one of those happy surprises of travel, as I had no idea all this driftwood would be in Ventura. And before we move on, Ventura is situated on the coast between Los Angeles and Santa Barbara. It is roughly 70 miles from Los Angeles and roughly 30 miles from Santa Barbara. And it is roughly 100 miles from my hometown of Orange, California. Ventura has also been used as a filming location for various movies. Most notably, the pier was used in Little Miss Sunshine. In 1872, when the pier was completed, the Ventura Signal published, At last we have a wharf. It is a grand improvement upon the old way, and duly appreciated by shippers and travelers. Since 1872, the pier has been reconstructed six times. By the way, most of the pier was closed on my visit. Although dead when I visited, the pier has a brewery, a fish house, and a taco joint. 
So, when the pier was first built, it was 1,200 feet. And at its all-time longest, it would be over 1,900 feet. Today, it is 1,600 feet long. The wharf would also be used to ship oil from the Santa Clara Valley, and oil became Ventura's top export in the 1890s. And a fun fact, citrus growers from the region are among those who formed the Sunkist Growers Association. The water is approximately 23 feet deep at the end of the pier. And then it was time to go to Surfers Point and check out the surfers. Local surf legends of Ventura include Tom Hale, Tom Mori, Carl Pope, Stan Fuji, and Bill Hubina. Surfers Point is one of the premier surfing spots in California. It stretches from west of the pier up to the Ventura River estuary. It is known for long, gentle waves. And I got to witness some sweet rides, but I think I will let the surfers do the talking, or rather, the surfing. Next up is the Ventura River Estuary. An estuary is a place where fresh water mixes with salty ocean water. Estuaries provide a nursery and valuable habitat for the growth of fish. Here, I actually think the graffiti adds to the beauty. I loved the fact that they had a big free parking lot right by this area. Many birds also pass through estuaries. Birds seen passing through this estuary include peregrine falcons, blue herons, and brown pelicans. Like the beach by the pier, there was plenty of driftwood during my visit to this beach by the estuary. That man in the distance is fishing. Another really cool part of this path is that the trains pass over the river. In particular, the Amtrak Pacific Surfliner and Coast Starlight trains come through the area. I am planning on doing an Amtrak trip video in the near future, so be ready for that. And you can in fact take the train to Ventura if you are interested in that. You can enjoy the estuary on the pedestrian and bicycle path, which opened in 1999. This is the same path that I mentioned earlier in the video. It is a popular path as many people were using it when I visited, but not too many. Next, the Ventura Certified Farmer's Market. I've said it before and I will say it again. I love farmer's markets. This one has operated since 1986 and has over 45 California farmers and food vendors. To be honest, I had no idea that the farmer's market would even be going on, 
It just so happens that the farmer's market is held right in front of where I was going next, the mission. By the way, there are plenty of free parking lots around the downtown area. This is the San Buenaventura Mission. It was an oasis of abundance. Notable visitors, including Captain George Vancouver and Alfred Robinson, commented on the good yield of the gardens and orchards. It was founded on Easter Sunday in 1782 and personally consecrated by Father Sarah. It was the ninth established mission and the last during Father Sarah's lifetime. Twelve more missions would follow after Father Sarah's death. There is an admission fee of $10 for adults, and the official entrance to the museum is the gift shop. The mission is still an active parish of the Catholic Church, and a service was going on during my visit. The church building has stood here since 1809. It is the only mission to have wooden bells. The bells were made of mahogany with metal plates. The metal plates provided their sound. There are many exhibits that I did not include in this video, such as a video on the mission, an exhibit dedicated to the Shumash Indians, which I already have made a video on, an exhibit on a seven mile aqueduct, an olive press and more. In the end, the city of Ventura was born with the founding of this mission, making it essential to the city's history and a valuable stop on any Ventura itinerary. Then I walked around outside while waiting for the museum to open. Then it was time for the Museum of Ventura County. The museum opened in 1913 in the Ventura County Courthouse, which is now the City Hall. Over the next 100 years, the museum grew and it moved twice. The museum serves as the official repository for historical artifacts and documents for Ventura County. This location includes a historic courtyard, an events pavilion, a research library, a children's garden, a gallery of George Stewart historical figures, and exhibit halls. Currently, admission to the museum is free, and the visitor center was nice and colorful, and they had some interesting gifts. And like the mission, they have a Shumash exhibit. One interesting thing is their belief that the universe consisted of three flat circular worlds stacked up on each other and connected by a pole. The shamans were believed to be able to use the pole to travel to the other worlds. The George Stewart Gallery of Historical Figures was a cool exhibit. George Stewart is a sculptor and historian who lives and works in nearby Ojai, California. My favorites were Moctezuma II, the Emperor of the Aztec Empire, and Leif Erikson, a Norse explorer who was thought to be the first European to set foot on North America roughly 500 years before Chris Columbus. The museum also has an agricultural museum in Santa Paula and an archaeological museum across the street. And this next one I discovered by chance while driving up the highway, Mondo's Beach. It is six miles north of Ventura, along Pacific Coast Highway. And there is free parking along the road in the dirt. It is a beautiful, colorful surfing spot for beginners, and just generally a beautiful, colorful beach. This is my first time seeing a dead seal on the beach. Hey, check out the FOIA border.
surfing classes are held at this beach. And there's a surf class right there gathered around. And of course, I just had to get some footage of the surfers riding the waves. And that's the surf class practicing their pop-up. Rincon Island is five miles from Mondo's Beach, and it is 11 miles from downtown Ventura. And this is another spot I decided to include in this video simply by chance. It is a small artificial island located off of Muscle Shoals. The island was constructed in 1958 for the purpose of well drilling and oil and gas production. The pier, also known as a causeway, stretches roughly 3,000 feet to the island. Today, the oil wells have been plugged and the operation has been abandoned. This pier is often seen in the background of footage from the world famous Rincon Beach. And this Muscle Shoals is not to be confused with Muscle Shoals, Alabama. I did my best to capture some sharks from the air. No luck this time, but the water sure looks beautiful. Then I went up to the Sarah Cross, which requires another one of those sketchy hill drives. Sarah Cross is located in Sarah Cross Park, and it is officially in the city of Ventura. As you can see, there is an amazing view, and it is a popular spot to pose for pictures. The cross continues a legacy that started at the time of the founding of the mission, when a cross was planted on a hill as a signal to people who were traveling and seeking out the mission. Much of the Sarah Cross Park was destroyed by the Thomas Fire in 2017, but the cross survived thanks to the firefighters. And this is downtown Ventura, awash in golden light. Once there was a historic Father Sarah statue in front of the city hall, but after legal controversies and political pressure to take it down, it was removed. The Ventura City Hall, formerly the Ventura County Courthouse, was built in 1913. The community of Ventura, officially named San Buena Ventura, was founded in 1872 when the mission was established. The mission was named after the Italian Saint Bonaventure. However, the city was not officially incorporated until 1866. That is the historic Ventura Theater, which opened in 1928. 
The city's population is officially just over 109,000. And this one totally took me by surprise too. The Ventura County Fair. I had no idea it was going on, and I was so stricken by it that I had to come back a second time. And arguably it is the most beautiful part of this video. Might as well do some history. The Ventura County Fair was established in 1875. It featured cockfighting, bullfighting, horse racing, and nightly balls. In 1877, it was moved to Pierpoint Bluffs. And in 1891, it moved to Port Wyneme. And most recently, the fair was moved to its current location of Seaside Park in 1914. And the fair is held right behind the Glitzy Players Casino. The fair used to be held in October due to its focus on agriculture. However, in 1987, the fair was moved to August to take advantage of better weather. The fair gets more than 300,000 visitors a year. Generally, the fair is held every year, but it was not held during the World War II years of 1942 through 1945 or the COVID pandemic years of 2020 and 2021. Legendary musical artists to play the Ventura Fairgrounds include Jimi Hendrix and the Beach Boys. I have to confess, I did not go to the fair. I think the parking is too much of a hassle, but I certainly enjoyed flying my drone around it. And there is the beautiful Ventura Harbor, home to the Channel Islands National Park Visitor Center. And the harbor is a launching off point for boat trips to the islands. All of that will be featured in a future video. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and spread the magic.